Welcome back to Sync Risk. My name is Charles Land from Blue Buddha Entertainment. So stoked to be back in the studio season two. Thanks for everybody's support and joining me in the studio, studio today. Two special guests uh, from San Diego, singer-songwriter Morel, a Blue Buddha artist. Good morning, Morel. How's it going? Good morning. <laughs> um, amazing. Um, I'm stoked to be talking about... Um, some music stuff today and um it's a good time should i do a little intro is that what we're thinking yeah actually and then okay thanks just wanted to do the <laughs> shout out and also joining us today your producer on your new batch of songs also from san diego welcome kevin selmer so good to connect with you kevin and how's it going kevin yeah it's going really great thanks for having me here i really appreciate it 100 100 percent Really a big fan of the work you guys have been doing on this new EP. And Morel, you know, for the uninitiated, you would have known Morel for her tracks. Uh, a huge track, Angel Boy, that when we first connected. And then you have a new set of songs, a new EP coming out this month. So Morel, I'll turn the mic to you. Would love to hear about the influences on this new record. And if you want to weave how you and Kevin had connected in, in this collaboration. Sure. Yeah. Um, last year there was a show that Kevin was playing bass for a different artist. It was at the music box and there was, Ooh, there was a artist named Jaden, Joe Marson. And there was another band from OB. Can you help me, Kevin? Half hour late, I think. Half Hour Late was playing. Was there anyone else on the bill? Nah, that was it. Okay. Well, you were, Kevin was playing for Jaden, um, and then I was singing some background for Joe. And I don't remember how it happened, but um, I had, had like, seen – I didn't end up making it to Jaden's set, but I'd seen videos, and I thought it was dope. So I started following the – um, musicians that were playing that night, uh -huh. you know, it's kind of like, oh shit, like local musicians, like doing their thing. And then, um, it kind of like, that was the connection via social media. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, kind of just happened organically. I was, we were like, oh, maybe there's like an opportunity to work together. And I was like, Hey, can you send me stuff that you like to do? And like, I think it was like 30 voice mem or not voice. Yeah. Voice memos later of all these like little guitar riffs and stuff that you had sent me. I was like, Oh, these are cool. These are like my vibe. So let's, yeah. you know, let's get in the studio and let's see what happens. And then fast forward. Um, we started working in May and then in August we were five songs. We were five songs done, which was nice. wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, uh, they all came, you know, they all had their easy mark, you know, easy and hard things about them. But mm -hmm. um, it was it was uh, it was it was a really good, really natural, like um, writing process, which was mm. enjoyable. Um, let's see. And then my influences. Um, ooh, I'm influenced by a lot, but I'd say for this for this batch of songs, mm -hmm. you know, I really started listening to, well, okay. I will say I was very inspired in April. I went to a Mac airs concert Okay. and Kevin's also super into Mac airs. And I had been like, I've been a fan of Mac airs, but when I went to the concert, I had like a, I, it felt like a spiritual awakening to his, nice. his music. I was like, this is, he's so soulful mm. and so passionate. And just, you know, I felt like he was doing something that it really inspired me and like woke me up to his music. Mm -hmm. And so huge. I was listening to him a lot for the whole project while we were making it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd say I have, you know, I, I really knew I wanted to make it kind of like an alternative R&B kind of soundish mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, while staying true to just like what sounded cool to us. So yeah. Um, I was listening to a lot from like, um, more modern stuff. So like yeah. it, from the SOS SZA's album mm -hmm. all the way to like super niche, um, artists, 
um, like, like, or, you know, semi-niche ombre Destin Conrad. Mm. And I did a lot of, like, Kalani listening. Yeah. Um, I'd listen to, like, some of uh, the way Summer Walker's stuff was produced. Yeah. I always thought that was really cool. And then, um, you know, and then I'd go back and, like, listen to, like, Kareem Bailey Ray and then, like, yeah. Nora Jones again because those are my original, you know, um, kind of, like, OG <laughs> inspirations. <Yeah>. No, 100%. Because, <laughs> yeah, Angel Boy, you know, because I used to work at Capitol Records in the 90s, so, like, coming up on – you know, like you said, Corinne Bailey Ray, Nora Jones, and then the new batch of records, I could hear influences of like Sade. Mm. And just it's still continuous with your vibe and your vocals and how you just deliver so emotively the Lane of Love songs. And then Kevin threading that needle on the production side, if you want to talk about correct you know rb soul a little bit of michael jackson some of your influences <laughs> uh in, in production yeah yeah definitely thank you um yeah i originally the song same same thing angel boy was the song that kind of put me on to morel and i really i think i had seen it as like a sponsored ad and i was like who is this person and i just really liked the the way that she wrote the song and like you were saying like very emotional and how she encapsulates you know her lyrics um for me my influences once again you know as she said uh mac ayers a uh, big influence for me um this guy named levin kali he's a big influence on me and then uh for this record uh she morell actually put me on to eloise which is uh it's like a side project of a producer named bruno major and uh, so that one had a big influence on me um yeah definitely worth checking out I think of what else uh yeah you know she it was it was interesting working with Moreau because we had you know I have more of a instrumental musical background and then you know she really dove deeper into like lyricism and we just kind of combined worlds and I showed her a lot of stuff she showed me a lot of stuff and mm -hmm. um you know it, it was a cool like collaboration as she said it was very seamless like the writing process you know I think the first week or so that we were writing together like three of the songs were like semi written out like we had already kind of it just kind of happened like that nice yeah and when you find that sort of groove there and you know kevin and morell you whoever wants to take this and i'm always curious because i know from song to song it can vary but let's take the track alone and we'll be playing some snippets in a minute but i'm just curious with the track alone what came first the lyrics or kevin were you laying down that groove first and then morell did her magic mm. i could you want me to take this one yeah you got it yeah she's so done. this so if i'm remembering right and i think i am <laughs> um after we'd be in the studio i would come home and sometimes things would happen and alone was one of those I came home and started it. Um <laughs> and I just was playing around. I think I was even working on like a different song and then of course, you know, something else happens. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so like the it was just like, oh, you know, you give me peace of mind and like it started happening at home and I took a video and I sent it to Kevin and I was like, What do you think about this? I think I had gotten to like I did like the verse and pre chorus mm -hmm. and then he was like, yeah, that's super dope. You know, let's, let's just like, like if our hearts are feeling working on it, let's just go work on it and put aside the current song that we had been working on, which I believe was ring ring. I can't really remember, but okay, we so. were like, this one's the vibe. Like we're really feeling this right now. You know, let's not like knock ourselves out and, and say we only have to work on ring ring at that time. It was just yeah. like, Let's do what what feels good, and so alone felt mm -hmm. really good. And then and then the drums came after we laid down the uh, guitar or bass, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I think, yeah, I remember. Yeah, when you sent me that video, I was like, "Yeah, we're we're switching gears. Like we're definitely working on this song. This is a hit." And uh, yeah, I remember Morel. Um, we were trying to find the right like groove for the song and like trying to find like the right feel. And then 
I was trying different like peels and Merrell kept saying like, no, that's not it. That's not it. And I found, you know, the drum loop that I ended up using and mm -hmm. that like kind of made the bass line bounce the way that it bounces in the song. And yeah. So it, it was definitely a collaborative process, like of her sitting right behind me saying, nope, that's not it. That's not it. And then eventually right. we, we got the, the perfect hit, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And, you know, I used to, DJ in college and I still on the side I like to you know whether it's remixing and, and tweaking stuff but the drums and once that bass line hits and then obviously Morel's vocals but the groove because from a DJ's pr perspective I'm always just honing in on that drum track or the low end bass but man it's um I'm gonna cue this track up and then we'll talk about it on the other side because also I know Morel, and we'll share it down in the links. There was a visual piece. You did a, a single release launch down in San Diego. And so this cut, we're going to spin it. It's uh, Alone by Morel, as produced by Kevin Selmer. I could play the whole track there. I wanted to play it up to your falsetto, Morel, because, man, mad feels on that cut. And then Morel and Kevin, whoever wants to take this, tell me about Correct. You did a live performance. And, man, if you want to shout out, you know, who's on keys, man, the players on that track on the live. It was like a recording studio in San Diego. I think you're – are you referring to the live performance, the QSC one? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kevin, I'll let you take this one. Yeah. Um sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, we did a QSC touch mix session, which I believe that's like Orange County area actually. Uh, um, okay. But yeah, Morel, you know, has an endorsement with them and they asked uh her to, you know, formulate like a band to do, you know, a live performance. So 
I was kind of in charge of uh, the instrumentalist, and she was in charge of the backing vocals. Um, so on keys, we had Alex Ernst. On guitar, Alan Knackleberg. Drums was David Sullivan. And then Anna Blue and Kaylee Daughtery. I believe that's how you say it, were the backing vocals. So, yeah. Amazing. And I, I was on bass, and, uh, you know, Morel, front lady. Yeah. Okay. That's right, Kevin. Yeah, I did. Because at first I, I was hearing the playback and I thought you were on keys. It was, and that's right. Now, man, much respect. Because, uh, and you know, Blue Note Records, Kareen and Nora, Nora, Je that's just, you know, I'm a label guy from back mm. in the day and seeing live performances and like that studio session. I mean, that could be released. That live version is just so pristine and to thread the needle um any plans to you know do like a strip back whether it's a you know just morale and vocals with the piano version or an acoustic with a guitar just strip because that that is another lane that track is just so beautiful and it could it could be you know interpreted that way as well you know it's funny that you say that because i ended up doing a little segment on um, the San Diego CBS and it was just keys and me mm. and uh, it was really fun. It was different. So it's almost something that like I haven't thought too much about, but I love that you brought it up. So it's swirling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it's because for sync, you know, having those alt mixes it's just another look and for, you know, the fan music supervisors who are already fans of your track, you know, when mm. I hit them up with an alt version, it's just mm. cool. Uh, but yeah, I think I might have saw that uh, you killed it. And I think, yeah, it was you on keys and then you had one of your, your backup vocalists on, in that live one at, on the, at the news station. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, no, so I was just on vocals Oh, okay. and then... Danielle Romano was on um, keys. Okay. And yeah, yeah. So she played keys and then it was just, yeah, it was just very like simplified, like vocals and keys. That's it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So definite vote for that. And then to, um, and we'll share the link, you did a video for Alone. And man, you guys pulled out all the stops. Where was it shot? There was like a boat. <laughs> Where was that? Love that video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm so proud of that video. <laughs> I definitely worked with amazing people. Um, big shout out to Alex Kobion and, and just Kobion altogether. But yeah, that was really like, so I, I felt like I was so happy with that video because I was just like, okay, we're not going to stop until it's exactly it. Mm -hmm. And we did it. So we went to Mission Bay. And um, we ended up uh, having a boat out on the bay for the most, you know, the iconic scene, which is like jumping into the water. Mm -hmm. um, and then where else do we go? We were at we were at a beach in Dana Point. Oh, um, yeah, we had we had a whole train scene that we mm. ended up cutting out and not using, but. Um, we took the train and there's some really cool shots that I'll probably use in future for this EP yeah. just in a different way. But, um, yeah. So, and then we also, uh, we're at, uh, Hendo studios doing some indoor stuff in San Diego. So cool. Yeah. Three different locations. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, <clears throat> cause the video backs up the, 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 you know, your performance there and the track. But I was like, as you were saying that morale was just like, man, I could have saw, you know, having the band, there would be a shot of they're on the boat performing on a bigger boat. <laughs> right. Right. Like, Oh, the, the possibilities are endless. Like, yeah, it's like, Oh my, like, it's so, it's such an interesting medium to work with, uh, compared to music, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely like low key scary, but then once it's all said and done, you're like, okay, this worked out. We're good. Yeah. Um, no. So yeah, I love the way the video turned out. Hundred percent. And then Kevin, to turn the mic over to you briefly, because as I was re-listening to the track, what I like, really like what you did 
at the intro, correct? It sounds like, is there like a low or high pass filter? It's like the, the, the drums or the instrumentation, there's some sort of effect there. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. There's like a high pass or a, a high pass, sorry, a low pass happening yeah. on the drums. And then, yeah, you know, I was experimenting with like different inversions of like guitar chords. So the, uh, even like the guitar chords are just like some weird inversions. It's called like drop two voicings. And uh, so that that's that intro. And then it kind of just leads um, leads into the, you know, into the instrumental. You know, so I really tried to like focus on finding different like arcs in the song and, you know, starting with that kind of like low chill vibe and then with the the water, you know, like, like you were bringing back to the music video, like Morel, like captured it perfectly with, uh, I don't even know what you call that, but that like old school camera look, you know, in the intro, it's like, like matched up perfectly with the intro. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And same with, you know, it's sort of like that breakdown where it's just Morel's vocals soloed in, which is the falsetto. Correct. You pull everything back, the instrumentation, so her vocals are just isolated. Yeah, that that uh, bridge is actually kind of. Uh, we went through probably like I don't know six or seven different like chord progressions and like just different ideas for like where to take that, and it almost mm. like you know we had to keep like going back to the drawing board because uh, we were trying to take it somewhere else. And then it was just like, no, it just needs to be simple and like um, just really innocent sounding. And uh, then, you know, I just started doing this like arpeggio and, it, you know, it was the right move. So, yeah, no, it brings me back because I had done a session at NAMM with uh, Katie Cole, touring musician with Smashing Pumpkins. And, Americana rock artist who we work with. And one of her quotes is, you know, great songs are written and then, and um, amazing songs are rewritten. And it's like you said, I'm sure you go in the studio and then you, you come back out and you're like, if you come back to it six months later and try something different, do you ever come back and rework a track and maybe re-release it as an, as a remix? Like what's that process like, Kevin? Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I'm still, I'm still getting my footing as a producer. You know, I, I've uh, released a few songs on my own, and then I was making a lot of beats for a while. I took mm -hmm. like probably a year off from creating and spent a lot of time like in fear, like just focusing on my theory and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I, I do have a couple songs like in the in the graveyard right now that I've been kind of meaning to get back to and, and I have some new ideas for. So, yeah, I think, yeah. Um, you know, there, there's kind of a balance between what, like, when is a song ready or if a song isn't ready, like, can you come back to that and like find that? And like with these songs, um, you know, these were done over like an entire summer and, and I, it was really important to me and morale to like, capture that summer you know capture that like this time capsule so um yeah yeah i don't i don't think we'll ever remix those songs for sure you know those songs are you know it's a time capsule 2023 for us yeah and they're timeless because i feel you know same with you know and shout out morel on remind me like with angel boy just go back did you self-produce that track i mean that's like vintage morel where and kind of what you're saying, Kevin, you know, certain cats, producers, DJs, when you hear a certain delivery of the vocals, you know, and it takes us back to like Blue Note Records back in the day. But Morel on Angel Boy, did you self-produce that? Or what was this? I can't remember the, with that release, that single. You know, that was like a, so I went to Amplified Studios in Carlsbad. Shout out to Amplified. And I showed them the song. I only had it on guitar because I don't really play many other instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So I was just like, this is my song. They have a house band. And so basically one afternoon, we just, you know, went in there and tried a bunch of different sounds. I knew I wanted an organ. And, um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of experience on – it's just at, like – after, if I don't understand the instruments, if I don't play the instrument, it's just a feeling. 
And so we just kind of played it and the drums and the bass especially was just like, I was like, if it feels right to me, there we go. And, you know, over the course of like a couple hours, I think we had it pretty locked down Mm -hmm. and, um, and then recorded it. Everything but the guitar was live. So it just has this like really special, I don't know, just, yeah, like kind of old school feel to it. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And your vocals, um, but we'll drop the links cause all time fave. And so if you want to set up the next track, so let it ring. This single came out recently. It's mm-hmm, all- this one. Yeah. yeah. And also produced by, by Kevin, Kevin Selmer on this one. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So we'll spin it and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Okay. Another great cut there. And as far as harmonies and backup, the harmonies on that, is that you or is that the, the backup singers? That's just, that's me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wicked. Just mm-hmm. Having fun with it. No, I love, love the groove on that as well. And then have you, have you guys, have you performed this live with a band or when you play it? So I know you gig a lot down in San Diego and maybe it's just you on guitar and, and vocals on that, or have you done it with a band? I've not done it with a band. Have mm-hmm. yet to do it with a band. Um, it's going to happen for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, that one, uh, another track with mad feels and then, so setting it up, we're in April. And then if you want to tell us, What's in store? Because there's some more tracks, and it's very exciting that you've produced with Kevin. And what's kind of the release schedule for this? So April 14th, uh, the four-song EP, well, five-song EP will be out. Four songs on all streaming platforms. A bonus track on the vinyl release. Um, and we've got Let It Ring and Alone are on there. And then there's two more, uh, Take a Few and Ring Ring. Um, that are just their own little, own their own songs. They're, I'm really excited to um, put the message out there and and like share share what the song means to me and how it like affects me. So um, it's gonna be good. April fourteenth. Nice. Save the date. And as far as plans for future gigs like what's the rest of of summer and 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 um you know obviously folks will drop in your ig and then if you do have 
live dates down in San Diego. Everything obviously can be found on your IG or your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm always playing restaurant gigs, sometimes private gigs, corporate gigs, all that good stuff, weddings. Um, and that is usually me solo or as a duo sometimes with bassist or guitarist. Um, but yeah, I'm always doing that, but I would say stay tuned because I am planning a special release for the EP, a little, little show. Um, I don't have the details of the time yet, but just definitely stay tuned because it's going to be a community event with a lot of musicians and a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of just good, good, good vibes. Very nice. Very cool. We'll post that up. And then I'm just curious, Morel or Kevin, um, a side note, you know, with technology and everything, Morel, do you ever do, um, live an acoustic mix or performance on ig live or Bandcamp? have you ever uh delved into I that ha i haven't i haven't okay Maybe it's in the books it might be in the <laughs> books yeah because no i know Bandcamp. you know some of the artists we work with Bandcamp's platform is pretty user-friendly for streaming and um yeah because that could that could be like you said around your release or because it's there's you know your audience and your fan base you know within the U.S. and just it's just an opportunity for outside globally folks who want to like man I want to hear Morel live and and um, yeah so we'll uh, that'll be a part two conversation. Fan camp heard. <laughs> putting it out there, putting it out there, but yeah, and then as far as you know always like to pose the question and this whoever wants to take this first but uh what's on repeat on your spotify what grooves are you jamming to for inspiration oh uh, lately oh man um, you know there's actually a local artist that i've been really turned on by lately uh, his charlie powers he's a he's he's pretty sick he's he's like a producer or something like he, he's like endorsed by Timberland. Oh. So he's he's doing big things in San Diego. So yeah, he's his album's been like repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> nice. What what's his name again? I'll look him up. Charlie Powers. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of like yeah, like alternative R and B and like uh, hyper pop. I think is like kind of the genre. So it, it's it's cool. You know, he's got his own vibe. He's all like DIY, just doing everything himself. So. Dope. Yeah, those are always the best. And um, cool, man. Thanks for the share on that, Kevin. And the morale, I'm sure when you're not listening to your demo tracks or new tracks you're working on, what's um, what's percolating on the, the playlist? So this past like week, I have been so hyper-focused on this artist, Naomi Sharon. She... I've I've really liked her since you know for a minute, but I don't know what it is about this week. I have had her album on repeat, and it's so good. So she's signed to Drake's label, Ovo Sound, and so she almost has like this very unique. It is kind of Shaw Day esque, hmm. but modern and more, um, just even more vibey. And but it's ah, oh, it's so good, and she has this gorgeous voice. So that has been on repeat for me. And um, I, I pulled up my Spotify. I was like, what have I been listening to? Uh -huh. And then I'm like, nah, let's be real. I, I've been I've been just listening to this album. It's called Obsidian. Okay. So good. Very nice. I just pulled it up and I was going to, I'm curious because I think I've I've read some editorial. It's safe to say probably uh, waiting for you that the title track is, is that that's the go-to, the first cut. Solid, solid choice. You can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. And nothing sweeter is so good, too. I mean, they're all... <laughs> Very I'm nice. Like, yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's so much, you know, and that's the thing. Um, and to thread the needle on this, com on this topic is, you know, so much music is released on the DSPs. And, um, you know, competitions immense. We're here in the U.S., but there's music coming out globally. But just wanted to thread the needle and, and pass the mic to you, Morel, because do you are you active on TikTok or primarily IG? You know, just IG, just IG right now. <laughs> um, yeah, the TikTok is 
is is a is a monster I want to tackle soon. <laughs> Yeah. So my my follow up question, and you know, we're all waiting with bated breath to see, you know, um, powers that be on the government level talking. You know, will TikTok be banned? And if that happens, you know, aside from connecting with your audience on IG, Morel, like your community, your your fans who follow your music locally, um, you know, if all the social media platforms go away tomorrow, what's your plan B? email list i'm work, you know it, yeah that's like my main main thing as other than instagram or say social media as a whole because you know some people are on facebook and whatnot um but yeah email list feels like the next best thing and that has been kind of something that i've been uh, collecting this past couple months good hundred so, percent yeah that's something you know katie cole had echoed you know like you as an indie artist, as long as you're creating that art and you have a way to connect with your, your community and as simple as, you know, sign up now on your website. Cause yeah, it's so important more than ever. And Kevin, same with you. Uh, we can drop your socials. We'll drop both your socials. So if folks want to reach out um, and follow Morel on her future dates and follow your work, Kevin. And yeah, man, what, you know, we'll continue this chat because we'd love to see down the line um, what you guys have both in store. But it was a great chat. Time flies by and we'll share all the music. But thank you, Morel and, and Kevin, for stopping by. Thank you, Charles. Thank I appreciate you. it. Much respect. Can't wait to we'll be dropping the other tracks on our IG reel so folks can follow. And with that. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the other side. Namaste. Go.